Hello, NeoVim users! My name is Evgeny Chesnovsky and I'm a NeoVim Lua plugin developer from Kharkiv, Ukraine. For the past two and a half years I've been developing Mini and Vim, a library of, at the moment, 35 independent modules dedicated to improve your overall NeoVim experience. By the time this airs it should be 36, with a new edition of a FreeCency plus Harpoon type of plugin. Sorry, Prime. In this talk, I would like to share with you a journey of how I got here without becoming more insane. Hopefully, at least. It will be in the form of a vague inspirational advice, but with some concrete examples. So, off we go. First, let's revisit a timeline for a bit of a history, to better understand the motivation behind certain choices. I started my NeoVim journey in July of 2020. This was a stage of getting used to the editor in my own pace. In February of 2021, it was time to finally make NeoVim my main editor slash IDE, but with the idea of having a simplish one-file dependency-free Vim config for a regular text editing. This implies a re-implementation of all the features that I need in that one file. As Lua was becoming a thing with soon-to-be-released NeoVim 0.5, I decided to first write the functionality in Lua and later translate into Vim script. And thus, the first custom status line module was born. After writing modules for a couple of months, I decided to give back to the community by somehow releasing the journey, as each module was very simple and would not find much usage to boost my ego, the idea was to bundle them together in a library and advertise it as minimal. Early May of 2021 was the first mention I could find of Mini as the name. And on October 13th, my actual birthday by the way, Mini and Vim was publicly released with already 12 modules in it. At this point it was too much fun, so as a hobby I decided to try and replace all non-file type specific plugins in my personal config. That is still the goal and it is close. A year later, all modules started also being released in standalone repositories. This indeed proved useful for a more widespread adoption, like by Folke and his LazyVim. Now we are at module number 35, and here are some bits of advice which helped me get here. Advice number one. Have deliberate constraints that work for you. This reduces time and effort needed for maintenance in the long run. In return, it implies an immediate pain of making decisions about actual constraints. For example, having many config options is just asking for a long-term trouble. How many is just enough depends on what you think is plugin's crucial functionality. What I would like to suggest, though, is to try and keep option nesting at maximum two levels deep. This makes it easier for users to actually comprehend how plugin is configured. Also, Choose carefully what functionality you'd like to support. It is completely fine to provide a good enough functionality without covering every use case. Here is an example from Mini Surround. Say you want to create functionality to surround text with another text. The first approach is to support only visual mode. There are many ways this can escalate, though. Provide an operator to work on text object. Make it support dot repeat. Make it support count, of course, with dot .repeat. This is where I'd prefer to stop, but it can go on. Support different actions for char-wise, line-wise, block-wise modes, support exclusive selections, and so on. For code, I found very beneficial having a strict limit that module slash plugin should be fully contained within a single file. This helps keeping focus when writing and reviewing code. Limiting overall number of lines is also important, otherwise the file would become a 10,000 lines unmaintainable monstrosity. Initially it was a hard limit of 1,000 lines, but recently I'm failing miserably due to increased complexity of what I would like to support. So for complex tasks I raise it to a soft 2,000. A somewhat specific but strangely effective constraint for me is to limit number of nesting levels in the code itself. So instead of nest if else, use early returns. Instead of call inside call inside call, use intermediate variables. Advice number two 
is to have a system, as in set of more or less predictable rules. This reduces surprise for maintainer when maintaining and user when using your plugins. Having same code structure and variable names decreases mental burden when dealing with multiple plugins. This can be as simple as having same order for common code blocks, like setup function definition, config validation, etc. Try finding what works best for you. For example, in mini -Envim, I found very useful to have the same cache table with a, well, various cache data to be tracked during plugin usage. In other words, this can be formulated as write with search and replace in mind. Renaming with LSP server is good, but it doesn't work for 100% cases. There are still strings and comments. Making repetitive tasks easier is good for your mental health, you know? For user-facing side of things, having consistent names is helpful. For example, use either mapping or key map, not both. Also, use consistent approaches for making your plugins work. For example, mini -Envim always uses similarly named buffer local variables to have buffer local effects. Mini something disable disables module for the buffer, and mini something config allows using local config. The setup function is a single entry point for making side effects. It defines highlight groups and mappings, creates auto and user commands, etc. This way, users can decide themselves, without having to know about specific conventions, when and how they want to load plugin. This can save precious milliseconds during startup. Advice number three from me would be to have patience. Nothing works on first try. If it does, you just don't know yet what is broken. Doing the work of actually writing, testing, revising, rewriting, retesting, and so on can be daunting except that there will be several stages until the final result, and it should go a bit easier. Slightly adjacent to this is to have patience to solve problems. Please, don't feel discouraged after the first failure. Try localizing and having names for the problem. See what information there is about it on the Internet. When nothing seems to work, sleep and repeat. One of the most important ways to increase your chances of doing better is to make yourself comfortable reading help. Here is one example. There was an issue during development of MIDI Move, which is a module that allows any selection to be moved in any direction. It was about finding the most robust way to reselect moved text. There were several attempts to make it work in all important cases. All failed. I vividly remember the great relief after reading help about V, out of desperation really, and discovering that with count it reselects, but at the current cursor position. So mimicking one V was the answer here. Bonus advice. Have fun. Without it, the journey may end earlier than it should. Also, try not to forget the feeling of joy and proud from using what you have created. Every opening of Mini Peak, which is a telescope alternative, uh, sorry TJ, lifts up my mood a little bit. It is okay to not be much, but in the long run it will make you a better plugin author. So that's about it. Thank you for watching and organizers for this conference. Leave a GitHub star, like and subscribe. See you soon.